Good morning. Since uh, COVID has uh, resulted in many of us being stuck at home and social distancing has meant that even those of us who are at work cannot teach how we normally teach, I've received many inquiries about how I use Radiopedia to give uh, tutorials. So I thought I'd go through this very quickly and informally. Just before we start, I just want to remind you that Radiopedia makes all of this functionality available for free for non-commercial use. Um, so please don't use this to create uh, products that you put behind a paywall and don't share with the rest of the world. We'll be covering a few things this morning, primarily how to create a playlist, how to then share a playlist to make it work effectively during a tutorial. Uh, and then if you want to record it, just a couple of tips and tricks. So creating playlists is something that's available to every user on Radiopedia and it's entirely free. And it's extremely simple to do. All your stored playlists are available through your user profile. And you can have both public and unlisted playlists. Uh, public lists are just as they sound. Everyone can access them and you can search for them through the site search. Uh, so you can, of course, reuse other people's uh, playlists, although generally playlists are fairly idiosyncratic and uh, fit to purpose. So you will find that crafting your own is probably ideal. So if we wanted to give a neuroradiology tutorial, we uh, could start with this. And let's say we decided that this was a good case to show which uh, it actually probably is. Simply go to add to and add to new playlist and call it tutorial one or whatever you want to give it. Now, if you choose as public, anyone would be able to see your playlist now, which depending on your mindset or your trainees, you probably would rather keep unlisted at least until after the uh, tutorial. This means that it won't show up on um, any uh, searches of Google or of the website itself, but you can still share it and we'll cover that a little bit later on. So now that you've created a new playlist, if we go and check it out on your profile, you can see that there it is. And currently it creates, it contains, I beg your pardon, a single case, but we want to add something else. so. Let's add a glioblastoma case. And the great thing here is that you don't need to use your own cases if you don't want to. Uh, we have over 30,000 cases, so feel free to use any of the cases on the site. So now that you've uh, already got a playlist, you can add to the existing one or you can make another one. So I'll just add maybe one more thing, uh, CNS lymphoma. And again, add. Oh. So uh, if you wanted to use your own cases, uh, you can then keep your cases unlisted and add unlisted cases to unlisted uh, playlists as well. Uh, otherwise you can use any public case uh, for anyone. So if we now go back to that playlist, we can see that it's got three cases. It doesn't have a description. If we go into edit playlist mode, you'll often want to do a few changes here. First, you can add an introductory test text. Um, I use this to record who I've shown particular tutorials to um, so that I don't show the same cases too close together. Uh, we've kept it unlisted. You can change that to public here. If you want to reorder the cases, just click and drag. And most importantly, you may, for example, in this case, you might be giving an MRI tutorial. And so you're not interested in giving the CT. So unclicking any of these will hide that component. So anything that's gray will tell you that it won't be shown when it's played as a playlist. And so you can go through and hide these parts. Don't worry about hiding discussion and presentation because I'll show you how to share the 
playlist without giving the answer away. So here it is. We'll change this tutorial one MRI CNS. Now, if you wanted to, you can uh, add uh, images or slides between the cases, but I won't show you how to do that now because it's really not necessary for tutorials. Once you've finished editing, your playlist is ready to go. And if you click play, you will enter full screen mode and you'll see there's the intro text. And when you start, we'll go to presentation of case one. And as you click next, you don't go to the CT, but rather you come straight to the MRI. We can continue once more, gets you to the discussion and so forth. So now sharing playlists. This can be done by using the share button and you have a number of options when you click it. Uh, these four are the important ones. If you share the playlist, um, well, firstly, if you were to share the playlist just with the URL in your browser window, because it's an unlisted playlist, that won't work and a user would get uh, access denied. So you need to make it available using this share functionality. So if you share this URL, you will get the view here behind. It will be taken to this view and then the user can click play. Um, this is a good if you've got a lot of cases and you want people to not do them in order, but ideally I would share it in full screen playlist mode. If you wanna share it ahead of time, then uh, I would recommend sharing with a hidden diagnosis. So if we take this URL, open up a new tab, here we are into our shared playlist. It looks exactly the same. And it will have the presentation and it will have the cases. But when you get to the discussion, it says this discussion is not available because you're viewing a presentation, shared and hidden diagnosis. And also in the finding section up here, that will also be hidden. So what I tend to do is uh, I share the presentation with uh, the uh, trainees uh, before the tutorial, uh, usually fairly shortly before the tutorial, but it doesn't really matter um, when you share it. It's great for them to have a chance to have a look at the uh, pictures properly. So now how to run a remote tutorial. The first thing you're going to need is some kind of uh, virtual meeting software. Um, we've used Google Meet and we've used um, Zoom and Microsoft Teams, Skype. They're all uh, perfectly fine. All you need is something that allows you to share your own screen. Uh, now, there's a few ways that you could run this. You could, for example, uh, do all the scrolling yourself. The, the problem with that scenario is that then the trainee needs to ask you to show a particular sequence and then ask you to go up and down and it's just not a very um, pleasant experience and it makes it actually much harder to do the case. If you've got a good connection some platforms allow one of the participants to take control of your screen uh, therefore you could grant that participant the ability to scroll on your end and everyone would see exactly what that participant is scrolling or alternatively you could get the participant to share their screen having received the um, playlist URL beforehand, and then they can just show what they're scrolling. What I found works quite well, and it's kind of a forced move for me because my internet connection in our rental house is really poor, is we share the list with uh, all the trainees, all the participants before the tutorial, all of them open one window on the virtual meeting and one tab with the playlist open. And then each person can scroll on their own version locally while looking at what uh, I'm scrolling through. And as the trainee describes what they're seeing, I will match that. If you want to see an example of this, head over to our isolation tutes and uh, check out the recordings of uh, my tutorials. That's how we run them and that works really quite well. So lastly, I want to just cover a few tips about recording. Recording your tutorials is, 
is, is a good idea because it means that those trainees that can't attend are uh, able to see the discussion. And in practice, it also means that some of the trainees that have attended get a chance to go back and check what it is that you've said uh, or go back over the case. In terms of uh, software to use, uh, there's lots of options. I run on a Mac, so you can record using QuickTime. Uh, that's probably the easiest because it's already built into Mac OS. Uh, and you just say start new screen recording. There's no real editing ability there, uh, which you may or may not want. To record the isolation shoots, uh, I use ScreenFlow, which is a uh, Mac OS uh, software platform that um, records both your screen and records the camera uh, feed from your laptop or monitor as a separate feed and allows you to edit the audio and uh, separate it out. And it means that you can then uh, add multiple tracks and link them together, getting rid of any bits that you don't want or uh, tweak the audio or add labels. It's clearly more than you need if all you want is to record the, um, the tutorial for internal use. Anyway, I hope this has been of some use. Um, I'll put some links below to some help files to show you uh, more information about playlists and uh, how that works. And I hope you stay safe and sane and keep teaching.